morning to each and every one of you year seven parents and guardians i just want to start off by apologizing that i'm not here in person to be able to deliver this session but hopefully the next best thing is me talking you through a powerpoint presentation which will outline what your children are doing and why they're doing it in terms of some things that we're calling year seven summative assessments which are effectively tests that they're going to be doing in each and every subject area that they study between the middle of may and the end of june i will also at the end of the session address um, some frequently asked questions which already are coming my way so even though i won't be there to answer any of these questions in person live i will hopefully be able to anticipate some of your questions and address those directly and if there are any other questions as a result of this presentation then the presenters of the virtual coffee morning will themselves either be able to answer those questions or they will make me aware of them so that i can then get back in touch with you and give you the answer to the questions that you want answering so let me just begin um, again by not just welcoming you to this session, but thanking you um, for joining us this morning. It's uh, certainly something about which I'm very excited to be talking to each and every one of you about how we're moving forward with assessments here at Crown Hills, starting with those students in year seven. So I'm going to begin my presentation now and I am going to just begin with the why. Why do we have these summative assessments in year seven? So for us, it comes back to our values. And as a school, one of our values of which we are particularly proud is aspiration. So we're doing these assessments because we want your children to be the best that they can be. And that's how we define aspiration here at Crown Hills. You may or may not know that there has been a lot of work in school on revising our curriculum, not just in year seven, but across and through all years. So we know certainly that their teachers are now teaching them a curriculum which is more challenging than ever. And we make no apology for that because ultimately, what is our end goal? Well, our end goal is for our students to be the best that they can be. And one of the ways that they can be the best that they can be is to learn lots of knowledge. So what does that actually mean? What does that actually look like? Well, it means that we want them to know more and we want them to remember more as they go through the college. It's important that they build on the knowledge that they have learned, that they don't just forget it because they've now passed that point and to them the work they might perceive is done and dusted, it's dead. But actually, no, that's not how our curriculum works. And we don't want them to forget things. Because if they forget things, then they've not learned those things. So by revising for and doing summative assessments, and I suppose by summative, what I really mean is a bigger test. By revising for and doing those summative assessments or big tests infrequently, so they don't do these very often, we know, because the research tells us this, that they are much more likely to know more and therefore remember more. So when will these assessments happen? These assessments are going to happen from the week beginning of the 17th of May and they will run all the way through to the week beginning of the 28th of June. Starting with science and finishing with 
expressive arts with a half term in the middle. Your children will have been given specific dates now within this um, time frame, so they'll now know on which dates specifically they will have each of those assessments. I'm not sharing that with you as parents in this presentation, but please do ask your children to confirm to you so that you're aware when those assessments specifically will be. So when will that science assessment fall in the week beginning of the 17th of May? Your children should now have that information and be working towards that in terms of their revision. So how will the assessments happen? Well, they will happen during normal lesson time. One of the questions which I've been asked already is to do with, isn't this going to be something which causes our students, your children, stress? Well, that is a possibility, but it is something that we are absolutely committed to reducing by making sure that these assessments happen in a serious way, but also still during normal lesson time. So that's one of the ways in which we want to show our students, your children, that whilst these summative assessments or big tests are important, they will be done in normal lesson time, hopefully to take the sting of the stress of the situation away from them. So how will they happen? Firstly, during normal lesson time. They will last no longer than 40 minutes. And one of the things that we're also trying to communicate to your children is the fact that yeah, revising for a summative assessment or a big test isn't just about learning the academic content. It's not just about the knowledge acquisition, as important as that is. It's also about preparing them as young people for how to approach things like this in the future. It's those skills around the knowledge acquisition that we also want our students to start being able to work towards. So we want them to show another one of our values, which is commitment, which will involve them bringing their equipment, including a calculator, and to do some revision at home. And we need your help as parents, as guardians, to support that process. We need your help to help our students, your children, show commitment. We want them to do what it takes for as long as it takes. So please do talk to them. Do they have their equipment? Have they packed their equipment the night before, ready for a day of learning the morning after? Are they doing revision? Are you speaking to them about them doing their revision, which is now taking over from their homework? So no student should now be saying to um, their parents when they go home, I have no homework to do because we have told the students very clearly and the teachers know this too and they're saying this to them that their homework is now to revise for their subject summative assessments. So what and how do the students revise? Well, ultimately it's everything that they have studied so far, but obviously those tests, only 40 minutes in length, done during normal lesson time, can't test everything. They will test only a sample of the larger amount of work that has been covered. So it is important, therefore, that you tell your students to check with their teachers for exact lists and to gather any resources that they need before they begin revising. And those resources might be things like knowledge organisers as well as old exercise books. How? How are they going to revise? Well, there are many different ways to revise. I'm sure as parents, guardians, you're well aware of that fact. But 
At Crown Hills, we're concentrating for the moment on one of the best ways, which is through something called self-quizzing. And one of the reasons why we're doing that is because the evidence and the research suggests that this is the most effective and efficient way. And also because we don't want our students to be overwhelmed, not just with what they've got to do in terms of learning, but we also don't want them overwhelmed in terms of having to revise in lots of different ways, which might only add um, confusion and possibly stress to the situation. And we don't want them to be confused, obviously, and we certainly don't want them to be stressed by these tests, which are only trying to establish whether or not they have remembered what they have learned from the past. It's as simple as that. So timetabling. Before I explain to you as parents what I've explained to the students in terms of self-quizzing, I think it's important that I highlight to you the importance of students planning their revision and they need to follow these simple rules which we would really appreciate your support uh, at home to reinforce. So it is important that they start revising early that they don't cram in the days or nights before an assessment. That's something with which we need your support as parents. It's ineffective and it's inefficient revision. And obviously you're at home as parents, as guardians and as teachers, we're not. So please do supervise them in that way, ensuring that they don't fall into any bad habits with their revision by cramming in the days or nights before an assessment. We need to encourage together working in partnership with each other our students to revise little and often and certainly never more than 20 minutes without taking at least a short break. I've already mentioned that this will be their homework. So no student should be then telling you that they don't have homework. They should be revising in place of their homework, but how they revise will be different from how they do their homework. So they need to be breaking it down into smaller chunks in terms of the quantity of information or the time that they spend on it. And certainly no more than 20 minutes without taking at least a short break. They need to space out their revision. So their first science assessment is going to be coming up soon in the week beginning the 17th of May. And their last expressive arts assessment will be taking place in the week beginning the 28th of June. They will be getting support. Um, in tutor time to help them plan their revision. But again, I think it's important that you echo what we're saying uh, at home, what we're saying in school, uh, which is about the importance of spacing their revision. So, for example, from a simple prioritisation point of view, it wouldn't make much sense for them to be starting to revise their expressive arts assessment just yet. It would make more sense for them to be planning for their science assessment in terms of their revision and those other earlier assessments. So helping them prioritise, supporting them with that is something with which we would really like your help, please. And finally, encouraging them not just to do things once, but to return to and to repeat things and also to support them in the sense that we're speaking about students who are probably doing this um, in this particular way for the first time, they should expect to forget. And actually forgetting is a part of the learning process. So you might get students, um, your children, who um, show frustration that they haven't managed to learn something. Be supportive of them because as part of the learning process, they should expect to forget. We all need to work together to provide that wraparound support, telling them how and what to revise. But also that wraparound support is also just general encouragement about what it is to learn things. And learning is hard um, and it's harder for some versus others. And we need to be constantly supporting our students to keep going, to do what it takes for as long as it takes, which again goes back to our value of commitment. So one way of self-quizzing that I've introduced to the students um, is the process of look, cover, write and correct, which involves reading or reciting, speaking out loud a small section of information thoroughly. As I've already said on the previous slide, making sure that they break up those larger sections of information into smaller ones. They then cover up that information that they've read or spoken out loud they then um, write and reproduce what it is they've been learning. 
So that could be a keyword in its definition from a knowledge organizer. It could be an answer to a key question which has been highlighted to them in their exercise books, in more practical subjects. It could be reproducing a diagram and drawing that or a picture. Additionally, or alternatively, they could say it out loud. And it's really important that they do this from memory because if they've not remembered it, they've not learned it. And then going through a phase of correcting. Um, again, if they've not remembered something correctly, then they've not learned it, but that's OK. We wouldn't expect them to learn everything all in one go. So we would encourage them to correct their answers in green pen. That supports what we do in school when we do self and peer assessment and to start the process again of looking, covering, writing and correcting. Um, I will at the end of this presentation show you a document which I have produced which your children will be getting and they can take that home with them. It will tell them how to revise using this particular method. But there are lots of other ways to self quiz. They can make their own flashcards. So, for example, reducing each topic down to maybe 16 key questions and answers and then they test themselves or perhaps they can be tested by others. You as parents, brothers or sisters. Again, if you have time and I appreciate that. Um, in a busy family home, there might not always be this time. But again, as parents, you know, we would only uh, want to encourage you to interact with your children, to support them with their revision. Perhaps you could ask them some questions over the dinner table um, and see if they can answer them. Um, anything that you can do to support your students, either in terms of the process of revision or in terms of the emotional support, them expecting to forget and so on and, and reminding them that that's okay. That is as much as we can ask. There are other ways as well that you can um, uh, use or support your children to use um, self quizzing. There's an amazing website called Quizlet and I'm going to be explaining to the students how they can make their own physical flashcards and quizzes and even use it interactively by uh, playing games uh, between fellow students and even across classes. And that's something as an extra that I'm going to be sharing with students um, later on in some further assemblies that I'm doing. And there's some information um, about how to do that, which I will leave on the screen um, just briefly. Um, but I will go through this in more detail with your children, our students, um, when I get a chance to speak to them again in an assembly. So that's why we're doing them. That's what we're doing. That's when we're doing them and also how we're going to be revising for them. Covered, I hope, I know briefly, but I'm hoping comprehensively and thoroughly for you. I do want to show you so that you can keep a lookout for this, what your um, children should be bringing home with them in the next few days. And one of the things will be this um, document. Revision guidance, telling them how to set up, telling them about the process of looking, covering, writing and correcting, but also some additional things about how to reflect on what they've learned, how to follow up on what they've learned if they've not managed to learn everything well what can they do about it one of the things that they can do is just make notes to ask their teachers for help later and also i've added some further guidance on how they can make and use some flashcards. so do take a look out for that as and when um, your children come home that's something from which uh, they should be working when they're revising for their subjects. It tells them how to revise pretty comprehensively. So um, that brings to an end my presentation this morning. I did say that there uh, would be um, some frequently asked questions which I would address. Um, I've already addressed one in the presentation earlier. I'm going to address a further two now very briefly. So one of the common questions some parents as well as students are already asking me is, will this have an impact on setting? The answer is um, possibly, but not wholly. So what I mean by that is 
um, sets may change as a result of um, these assessments, but these assessments are only one part of a bigger picture that we're building up on your children to determine whether they should move up sets or down sets. And there might not actually be much movement at all. So I do want to reassure both parents and students that this is not um, the last word in whether or not they'll go up or go down or even stay where they are. It is part of a bigger picture um, because we're aware that whilst these assessments are important, they're not the only thing. Um, and we all know that students can have sometimes just a bad day and it's not reflective of their holistic performance. And we will not um, um, have any students disadvantaged as a result of that. So hopefully that will reassure both parents um, as well as their children. Um, so please do convey that as well at home, that this is not um, as high stakes as all of that and therefore something to be stressed about. The other question was with regards to parents and guardians um, of those students with a special educational need, for example. So this is actually a great opportunity for the SEND faculty to start putting in place something called access arrangements. So that might be things like um, extra time. It might be things like having a reader or a prompter. Um, it might be to do with getting papers which need to be enlarged for students with visual impairments and so on and so forth. So actually, it's a really good opportunity for us to start getting the students used to those access arrangements because what we need to do is to show over time that this is a normal part of the working process of your uh, children and that should really begin in year seven. So we want our students to be the best that they can be. We want them to do what it takes for as long as it takes, but they're not going to be able to do those two things if they've got a send, if they've not had time uh, starting in year seven to practice with the things that are theirs by right. Those things like, um, as I say, extra time. Do they know how to use that extra time fruitfully? And the answer might be in year seven, they might not. But the point is, is that we're going to set these things up now so that they can benefit from future success later on as they get more used to having, for example, 25% extra time, as they get used to working with um, somebody who reads the questions for them. Um, any more questions with regards to specific access arrangements, you will need to speak to our SEND co, um, Louise Glasby, but hopefully that is going to reassure you that um, as parents, we are doing everything that we can to support any of your children with the SEND um, during this time to be the best that they can be, but also to be really uh, thoughtful and intentional about what we're going to be doing with them in the future. We need to start getting them used to these access arrangements early and we need them practicing them often. So that brings to an end my presentation. I'm sure uh, that the presenters will field any questions that they need to and can answer um, straight away in this presentation. If not, then I'm happy for them to let me know what those questions are and for me to give that feedback to um, any parents provided that they leave their details um, later on after the session today. So once again, thank you very much uh, for being with us. Apologies again that I couldn't be there in person, but I am looking forward very much to working with you and your uh, children on what will hopefully be a successful um, first attempt at these summative assessments. Take care everyone, stay safe. Bye for now. Bye.